वेलकम टू एन एम न्यूज एंड दिस इज अभिजीत नंदी मजुमदार एंड आई हैव विथ मी डॉक्टर राजकुमार रंजन सिंह इज द मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स एंड एजुकेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया बट मोर देन दैट ही इज द मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट फ्रॉम मणिपुर यस वी बी डिस्कसिंग अलॉट ऑफ थिंग्स अबाउट वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन इन मणिपुर लॉट ऑफ दिस Uh, and clear the air because uh, there are a lot of uh, propaganda uh, going on a lot of uh, false narrative which are being published and uh, really from from far we do not know what exactly what is the situation in manipur at the moment a lot of cross fires so we will try and get as much as possible from uh, our minister here and he has been spearheading uh, india's uh, foreign uh, mission abroad uh, uh, foreign ministry is the minister of state <laughs> and he has also visited a lot of foreign countries with india's mission and vision welcome to nm news uh, dr singh and how are you doing everything else is fine nice, sorry <laughs> great nice to see you so i'll start off initially with the latest uh, big news of the day that's chandrayaan 3 now i want to know what does it mean to india's foreign policy uh, based on sunrise tree yes yeah india uh, yesterday proves that uh, india is one of the uh, country scientifically very strong astronomically excellent and so we landed yesterday uh, in the southern pole of the moon Uh, that area is never covered by any of the uh, the leak of uh, satellites usa russia and china and india its own indigenous systems could land it and that is that's proof that india has the capability uh, among the rest but of course we are not the rest but we are in our own way the space technology is developing and that will give a good impact uh, to boost the indian economy and also to uh, growth in the field of uh, industry so for example uh, when i joined as an mp for the first time i was in the standing committee of the parliament or science and technology and environment through that standing committee i have a chance to visit all the space research stations uh, based in south and you know uh, earlier i also thought that india how can we afford huge amount on the space whereas the common minimum infrastructures was not to the level and we cannot we could not deliver to the people as a democratic country but of course it has a lot of uh, impact also earlier i thought that uh, just i mention it then you know in a common sense not a space man or space scientist as a common man i thought that after seeing the space station and their research say for example in puel in our uh, the normal way of uh, the journey my car if puel is less we can go uh, to the fueling station but in the space the true a distance of many light years there is no uh, the refueling station but the ones filling with that well how it would reach to that with a high speed and high energies so space scientist is doing uh, research on the fuel and then i thought that this is only for space but ultimately uh, after some times i saw in the petrol pump extra miles and that the technology and the finding of the research is transferred to the industry and that is promoted to Uh, the common p- commuters and transporters with the less uh, the uh, the carbon monoxide to the atmosphere and Envi- more environment friendly more, more environment friendly and a small quantity of oil moving uh, the uh, the uh, for a distance huge distance and that is one 
And number two also, I thought that in the space, they told me that color coding. So when the space is moving in a high speed with the frictions of uh, the atmospheric layers, the heating is quick and the burning down, blasting is one of the major problems as I was uh, conceived uh, with uh, uh, st hearing the stories. Then they are doing the fireproof coat color. That also I thought that why this is only for space. But now uh, that after research, the technology is transferred to the industry. Industry has produced the fireproof colors using in our uh, the dwelling house. And this is some one to a uh, simple example I'm giving. So doing the research on the space, we have a good benefit uh, given to uh, particularly in the communication system and also the aerial mapping and prediction of weather and prediction of crop diseases, soil, minerals, and even in the deep oceans mineral also it can be traced out through the satellite and remote sensing and these are uh, benefits that the people will to the common man. common man and to the people of India, to the country as a whole and it boosts up the economy of the country. Absolutely. So, as a foreign minister, as a junior forereign minister, have you received, uh, have you, you must have a lot of uh, countries and a lot of uh, ambassadors and foreign missions must have spoken to you about uh, India's progress in the space uh, sector. So, uh, how do you feel, where do we stand now? vis-a-vis -vis because we are the only fourth country uh, mm. to go into the southern post pole of moon. Yeah. Uh, before landing uh, the Sandrayan Thar to the moon, our space, the, you know, the ISRO has developed a lot. And many of our friendly country are uh, technologically, uh, we are helping them, for example, the small Pacific Island and some of the friendly country, we are sharing the technology, we are allowing them to develop their weather station and remote sensing, say for example, Nauru, the smallest uh, the island country, they have a lot of uh, rock prospect and the first mining was over, now secondary mining they continue and they train to us in our ISRO uh, for remote sensing and the depth analysis on underground uh, to assess the deposit. So after training, they could conduct the survey of the underground deposit, the secondary mining, how much of quantum is there, and how much of investment they. So this, these are the some of the examiners. Uh, the example I'm giving, uh, it uh, give a good relation and technology transfer and confidence to India is built up with, uh, through this technology, space technology. So this has been a huge yeah, quantum one jump. Of the example, one, one of the examples. And so through this mission success, mm. ISRO has been helping. I mean, your, uh, the, our country's foreign uh, policy and as well as helping the younger nations much and friendly, friendly the nation, younger nation, generation nations, yeah, young, inspiring younger generations also mm -hmm. in this field. That's that's a uh, huge. You know, in this Sunrise, there are four Manipuris. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we are proud of it also. Uh, of course, they are in the different field. One for the ro the the what do you call that the the, the ro roser or something like that. You know? And that field, another one is in the controlling system, I don't know. Absolutely. So, so that, that is all taken together. It is a massive, uh, this thing for uh, the government of India and a massive success for our country, for India. So, moving on from there. No, not only that. In uh, the space technology, we are, uh, Prime Minister Modi, not confined to the ISRO only. We also privatize also. Okay. The private companies are also coming up and to share some of the space-related production, space-related science. So, people's participation is also there. So, uh, if you can just elaborate on that, this private, pers uh, this thing on space mm -hmm. that you are talking about at the moment, that Prime Minister Modi has uh, given the private, uh, uh, allowing, the allowing, private, the, allowing participation. private participation. Mm -hmm. So, does it pertain to foreign countries also? Uh, certainly. Same thing. Uh, the product of the private party on space element, 
they can excel it, they can export it. And that's why the technology transfer is here. taking place. Mm -hmm. So now you have been the Minister of State for External Affairs for quite some time. Now the election is knocking at the door mm -hmm. and uh, you have visited several countries. So what satisfaction, what is, what do you, where do you think you are really, you are really satisfied, you are very happy and how do you rate your own performance? Uh, at the beginning, I thought that external affairs, uh, I never imagined that kind of portfolio will be given coming from the Northeast and first time MP. It's a very uh, the difficult uh, the portfolio and also it carries the message of the country and also built up the, the cemented relationship uh, as well as also promoting the threats and people-to-people -people connection. Uh, I really uh, the happy and wonder how Honorable Prime Minister Modiji is choosing me uh, as a State Minister of the External Affairs and also assigning the Southeast Asia, where my physical appearance is almost the same uh, with all the South Asian countries. So whenever I visit in any of the country of the Southeast Asia, they treat me as if they are on uh, the, the, the nation. So on the other hand, this has given unlock all those uh, the uh, uneasiness thing has been released when uh, they saw my face. For example, when I visit for the International Yoga Day at uh, the Cambodia and Laos, many of the Cambodians said that you are not uh, Indian. <laughs> I said that I am Indian. Then uh, the, from which part of India? Then this part. Then they uh, realize it. Oh, you are belongs to the Laosan group. I'm also, they say that you are a sound people. So sound communities are there. So maybe, so uh, from that ease of uh, dealing, we can develop a lot. So uh, during my short time, short uh, visit, uh, short span of uh, the ministership here, uh, see, uh, many of the country, uh, through my, uh, earlier my predecessor has already planned, say for example, uh, Joy Shankarji was the, uh, the, uh, the foreign secretary for a quite a long, he know uh, the global movement and everything is in his finger trip. And another thing is that uh, the office of the external, Mantralois, the ministerial office of the external affairs, this is a, oh, it's a wonderful thing, it's a very systematic, and very, uh, what you call, protocol types. Even the word, even the dress, even the sitting pose, these are all, uh, what you call, set to protocol. In a system. In a system. So uh, I cannot speak uh, everything also, but that has to be uh, the balancing. Uh, and also, before visiting to that particular country, I have to know. Uh, what kind of language, what kind of uh, the culture and what background knowledge. Then. Background knowledge has to so be. So, yeah. the areas that you had looked <coughs> after, that the country that you went, especially Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. so India's relation with Southeast Asia has improved uh, over in your time. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. but see, uh, not only the improve, make it uh, re vibrant. Okay. India and South Asia, uh, Southeast Asia has a, a historical relation. One is the Buddhist link, and another one is the Hindu link or Ramayana Mahabharata link, and the Solas dynasty of the Deccan. Uh, the, all the Indian origins are from this, and all the, even the language, even uh, the culture is still maintained. So that's the whole Southeast Asia. It seems to be extended uh, portion of the. Indian subcontinent culturally and religiously. I want to say like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And coming to the other department, the education ministry. Mm -hmm. So what was, what has been your primary aim in the education ministry? Uh, since I, my career started right, uh, from the beginning as a educationist and I have a lot of interest also, but you know education is a vast subject. And this is also another crucial minister. Whole of our citizen has to be trained in tune with the changing circumstances and complexities of the world. 
So that's why uh, our Prime Minister, under his guidance, uh, the National Education Policy 2020 is the compact and total revolutionary or structural change of the Indian education system. Saying so, we are not neglecting our ancient wisdom and tradition. Uh, the, uh, particularly in this, uh, the national education policy, we make revivant of our ancient system. For example, Nalanda, Takshashila, many, many uh, the prominent uh, the universities was there uh, 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. So based on that wisdom and philosophy and the uh, the way of learning. Combined with the modern technology and digital format and the changing circumstances, this is, this is the combination of ancient and the changing world. So we are hopefully, uh, and we have a full confidence that under this uh, national education policy, our youths, whenever they pass on through this system, they are ready for the 21st century. They are competent for uh, to do any job, and they were we are build, build, building built up their mindset with the critical thinking, and also UN, United Nations Common Development uh, the National Goal, Development Goals, uh, the par parameter also fit in this education. So when we talk about this education, the the lot of opposition leaders mention that you are distorting history. How do you react to that? History? Uh, I beg your pardon. You are distorting history. You are uh, not, you are only putting in people who are with uh, your party ideology. Mm. You are making the students study them, whereas you are neglecting other uh, uh, important leaders. Uh, perhaps the current national education policy 2020 is a non-biased uh, the system of policy. Say for example in uh, the medieval period of India, why the earlier policy is not covering the medieval periods, the dynasties who rule India and their contribution, their built up, their architecture, their historical innovation, why? For the last uh, more, many, more than 70, over 75 years, why that portion is left out? We are bringing that portion. So there is no left out to others. We want to depict India's originality, India's contribution, or ancient, uh, the, uh, those contribution left out intentionally or unknowingly. But, but that we discover and we added, what is the harm to put that in? Absolutely. Now, there are a lot of institutions, there are a lot of uh, mm. uh, complaints which come in that a lot of uh, minority education institutions, they force students to uh, do uh, follow certain minority rules uh, for general students. So, uh, in, in this situation, uh, what is your uh, reaction to that? There is no force, you know. India, as a nation, we need to strengthen the nation. And also, we, in the, in, in, at the same time, we are also uh, appreciating the diversity, multiple di diversity of the country, and we treat it as our strength and resource. Based on that, we are bringing the uh, streamline to the one nation's the policy. So the education will be one nation policy which yes. covers everything, everything and you are clearly saying that you are not, I mean uh, what opposition is alleging that you are not, uh, you have not deleted any portion of major history no, no. of India uh, culture what and left out is what was out. left out earlier no. has been incorporated now. Yeah. That is your, yeah. so coming from the education now to uh, something which concerns uh, your state Manipur. So that has been on the boil for the last uh, three and a half months, four months, maybe more. Uh, it slowly started and then it uh, went out of control at, at a time when everybody started speaking about it and a lot of people unnecessarily lost their lives. So uh, how, what do you, 
what is the basic? I mean, you've been, you are an MP member of parliament for Manipur, you have stayed there, you are, what do you think is the basic problem? Basically, uh, right from the eruption of that, uh, the violence, I appeal on the true spirit of the Manipur. What is true spirit of Manipur? Manipur is a state having its own uh, history uh, of about 2,000 years and single dynasty ruled till now. And of course, the monarchy is not here. And it has the, uh, the, uh, the, it is recognized by the world for the uh, for, for uh, the world famous polo. It was first play in Manipur. There are many backgrounds. And Manipur culture and civilization and even the language and the heritage is the product of the composite multiple communities, ethnic communities. We have about 34, 35 ethnic communities. We were all symbiosis. And each and every language of the, the so-called Manipuri language is the accumulation of all those communities' languages. And that also we use one of the, what you call uh, the uh, beauty of the language, even the water. If you write it, the water in Manipuri language in, uh, in the poetic poems, you will use some of the tribal language, ethnic language. It's, it's a, what you call, I do not know in the language term. Uh, so, uh, uh, the stylish type of uh, the wordings are used. So, ultimately what happened? Basically, Manipur is the offshoot of the ancient Indian civilization, which link with the Southeast Asia. And that area was so peaceful during the, uh, the uh, king's time, uh, having all the Vaishnavite, Ramanandi Dharma, and also the, uh, what you call, Hindu Dharma. The, with all these things, our ancient tradition has been grown up. For example, Ras Lila. It was our ancient dance with the spiritual and theme of uh, the, uh, the, the philosophy of Radha and Krishna. Then it grows up. Uh, to, to the, the classical, classical form. So, so that's so why uh, after adoption of the Hinduism, uh, the then some group of uh, the Brahmins, they might have uh, the, uh, rejected those hill people who they wanted to join the Hinduism. That time Brahma Sava was there and they charging high. That time currency is very costly. Materials are cheap, and that time they cannot afford. They were not satisfied. Those ancestors of the hill islanders, and then ultimately the Westerners are coming. The Americans, uh, the the uh, baptizing uh, peoples coming, and they started first to Manipur, uh, Impal Valley. That time, our the climax of Hinduism is there. So. No one was uh, the accepted except one, Mr. Amo, his name is. He is the uh, cook of the American, uh, the Pettigrew. He spread, he convert the hill tribes peoples into Christian. Okay. So, <laughs> so after that, uh, the beliefs has different. And that is how the ethnic tribes started. Yeah, it, uh, the, the hill peoples are almost converted to Christian. Valley are confined to the Hinduism, and some way of untouchability type of thing has evolved, and that was the uh, the leaf was given, and ultimately the when the British come, then again they separated the hill administration by the Darbar. Darbar, Darbar is headed by the uh, the British. And the Maharaja is looking after the valley. And then when we joined to the Indian Union, again the constitutional provision, uh, again following the, uh, the what you call legacy of the British style, Hill Area Committee and the, the plain general people. So these are the basic, uh, the 
uh, differences in, at the beginning. And ultimately, what happened? Uh, the Maharaja of Manipur have a military alliance with the British, and when they occupied uh, and control on uh, making of a uh, bombing of uh, uh, the British India, they occupied the Burma also. So generally, the current ethnic who is uh, conflicting with Manipur is basically they originated from the Burma. And they were allowed by the king on the request of the British to settle in Manipur, pass web of uh, those group, and that we call it all Kuki. All means Purana. Okay. And they were all assimilated with the system and lifestyle and culture of Manipur. They are as if Manipuri, original Manipuri. Otherwise, Naga and Maitis are the original settlers. And then they came it and assimilated with us. We were so happily contributing each other and forming the modern Manipur. Then, of course, India got independent in 1947. Burma got in 1948. The general, uh, I mean, the Prime Minister Unu was dethroned by the, uh, the uh, what's that? Uh, general Nevin. Nevin of Burma, General Nevin dethroned. Uh, and the army rules was imposed, and then he ruled for about uh, two, uh, a, a decade. During that decade, ethnic cleansing was there. non burman groups were driven out, all the Indians, Tamils, Bengalis, and even Maitis and Assamese were driven out from Burma. During that, 60 to 68 or 69 disparate. And that was the huge, uh, the migrants were pushed to Indian soil. At that time, uh, Punjabis, Bengalis, and Tamil, only Tamil, some Tamil groups and some Punjabi groups are stationed in Tamu, More Town, More Town, uh, in the border town of the Manipur. So, uh, along with that, many of the Kukisins were also driven out, and they settled it uh, to Surasanpur, and the name Surasanpur, how it gives. There was no settlement at that time. Only some mighties were settled in the Kurga Valley and others. Before the cookies uh, are settling to that place, the mighties are the settlers. The name itself is given uh, after the visit of Surasan Maharaj. Okay. When he visited that site, the name was given Surasanpur. And that is the historical background. Then ultimately, uh, those Kukisin brothers and sisters who were driven out from the Myanmar was settled in Surasanpur and Tenupal area, Sandil area, and that too, no problem. We are all assimilated. And nobody is aware that in the, uh, the far flung area where the administration could not re effectively uh, reach there, they were settled. Then uh, the, during the 1990s, the pro-democracy movement started Aung San Suu Kyi, and many again driven out, including the Burman group. Those Burman group were returned to their Myanmar, and some has changed their nationality, citizenship has changed to some other country, but those cookies in brothers and sisters who were also driven out from that. Other ethnic communities, Karen, Kasin, Sans, who are also driven out. All those students who are involved in the pro-democracy movement, they rest to us. So many of them return back, but the, 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 the community, particular community, is not back. They are also there. But up to that, the saturation level, I presume that the illegal migration, Saturation is already uh, saturated. Then in 20, 2020, 21, again the Myanmar politics has again cooled by the British army. And that time, against the military authority, and these groups, these ethnic groups, were attacked to the, uh, uh, the Myanmar army groups, and uh, they operated and passed out. They were run at, uh, inside it, uh, inside India, with all these sophisticated 
Uh, arms and perhaps you might have seen in Chicago and Chin Hills, they have their uh, own, uh, the platform, they create the train, everything is there, no? Hmm. So they, that is the things. You know, Manipur, geographically, is a unit to one, one unit, it cannot be separated. All are hills. More than 92% is a hilly terrain. Only remaining 8% is so-called plain. It's an intermontable plain. You cannot compare with the Ganga Basin or Brahmaputra Basin. It's a small hillock plain. In that plain, more than 60% of population is concentrated. And the remaining hill areas, 92% is the, the population percentage. Earlier it was only 35 and the only when we know that uh, the illegal migrations are outnumbering the original settlers, then the so-called major community like uh, Maitais and Naga, they feel that, in, they feel insecure in terms of land resource, in terms of economic, in terms of political rights. Then they have a some, some psychosis, psychosis of that. that. And in, in the, the meantime, uh, the illegal immigration is, uh, number is increasing. We are not blindly saying. If you see the 1971, 81, 91 census, there are certain areas where the population is unnatural. Our growth rate, fertility rate is lower. But how the population is increased, that is another questionable. But recently, United Nations, UNS here, they published, uh, because of the, uh, the present political situations, the Sagang district of Myanmar, most of the ethnics were illegally entered to northeastern India, particularly Nagaland. Manipur and Mizoram, about 53,000 of population during the last two, three years. And it's proved that. And our land area is limited. Forest classification was done as early as 1933 during the Darba resolution, by the Darba resolution. And that when we are joining with the Indian Union, whatever Darba resolve is in total accepted by the government of India, and also new gazette was issued as early as 1960s. So there was no question of newly uh, the uh, conversion of uh, reserve forests or protected forests. But that was not there. But of course, uh, if we see politically, the previous government, they are not conscious on this issue. And there are many uh, the issues were evolved because of the previous government. They are not looking far. They are not far-sighted. They did not tackle the issue. Yeah, they they just how they passed the times with some of the uh, the resolution made by them. Say, for example, in Karnatombi and Kangpokpi. It, it's, uh, it's an area of uh, con uh, assembly constituency is not reserved, it's a general. So in that area, what happened? There were about five Nagar Panchayat. Why the Congress government in the year 2012 or 14, they converted to uh, Hill Area Committee? Even the More Town, there was a small town committee. During that time, Maitri can be the uh, commissioner, Punjabi, Tamil, and tribal peoples are also in the town committee member. But now once it, it is uh, converted to ADC, it's only for tribal areas. So they dominated slowly and they were driven out all those peoples. So this kind of administrative uh, the blunder creating all this problem. Not only that, creation of the 15 district is also another blunder that I do not like to explain. Blundered by the Congress government. Yes. I said, now tell me one thing. People say drugs are a free flow in Manipur coming from this is a gold, part of the golden triangle. Mm. Uh, and uh, so, uh, how, why has the government not been able to control uh, 
a drug trade in Manipur? Actually, uh, in some of the publications by some journalists already mentioned that 10% uh, of the Golden Triangle drugs were shipped to Northeast India. And also, earlier Northeast India, including Manipur, is a drug peddler's route. Now it's transformed into half of the drug manufacturer. And for that, those illegal immigrants, they, their source of earning is the OP plantations. And there was uh, some uh, economic intelligence also published three, four months ago. A huge amount was encased in the region, particularly Nagaland, Mizoram, or Manipur. So from where source that money is coming and for what purpose it was engaged within the shortest possible time, uh, whether that amount is used for public plantation or to the current ethnic violence. And these are some of the things which has to be uh, critically observed and analyzed. So that is the part of the drug thing. So do you think the government has done enough to stop the drug menace? We need a strong policy. It should be policy-based. Control system should be there. Of course, we have national level, uh, the many narcotic bureaus, national bureaus, they have all the rules and regulation. Even then, in a specific state like Manipur, the state should have certain kind of policy. And that has to be, of course, they all are human beings. They have to be rehabilitated, uh, rehabilitated or transforming the poppy plantation to other economic plantation or value-added production should also be created. Uh, in the meantime, the uh, illegal immigration should also be filtered. So you do not have, you have a very porous border between Myanmar and uh, India. So anybody on the terrain is very, very difficult. How do you control border uh, human smuggling across the border? How do you control infiltration? That's why border management should be strengthened. And on the other hand, there are many agreements between India and Myanmar, and also international law provide that at least some uh, the about 16 kilometers in and out are permissible to move. And also, they are uh, the same ethnic community is a transboundary population issues. The same site is also the same ethnic community. This site also same ethnic community. They are intermarriers also culturally they are joining. Because the main factor, what I assume is that the political environment of our neighboring country is uh, not hospitable. On the other hand, India as a democratic country is a hospitable Every citizen has every right constitutionally protected. So on the other hand, those sites are not properly uh, the, what you call, the human rights or political rights or are not so in a pro, uh, conducive to the citizen. So they are pushed out from that area. And coming this side. Uh, coming this side. We are uh, <laughs> calling, I, I think we, we are, <laughs> Uh, you are inviting them over oh, to yeah. Yeah. Because, because of the Indian, Indian democratic, democratic system. system. <laughs> so uh, one thing that I lastly want to ask you here, uh, because a lot of people have heard a lot of theories about Manipur. So what is the way forward peace formula for Manipur at the moment according to you? What is the peace formula for Manipur in short? Uh, I already mentioned that Manipur, the so-called Manipur, the present territorial boundary of Manipur is a natural single unit. It cannot be separated. It is adapted with the people who are settled right from the early beginnings, uh, from the beginnings. So it's an, no ADC, no uh, dif differential? Uh, no, no, no separate uh, is there. administration. No, it's not uh, the way to solve it. Uh, so what's the solution? Solution is that the spirit of Manipur should be uh, the, uh, should be revibrated, and also the rules and regulations of the government, 
particularly about illegal migration and other uh, drug plantation, that has to be strengthened in a proper way. And all the state machineries, including the census operations and the issue of others, should be uh, in the proper way, not in the proxy or not in the duplicacy. And even all the electoral rolls should also be recast. And that, that is the uh, way how to control the, uh, the growing issues. But on the other hand, my best simple uh, the, uh, the idea is that to bring back the peaceful Manipur, we should always remember the spirit of Manipur and idea of India has to be appreciated. And this is the only two uh, the point and that has to be considered as a focal point to bring peaceful to Manipur. Lastly, it is very unfortunate that your house was attacked and portion of it was burned down. You lost a lot of very important books and mm -hmm. many other things. When do you plan to rebuild your house and bring it back to its lost glory? Uh, yes, uh, I feel emotion uh, the attack by the group of my communities. Perhaps they are politically biased or maybe jealous. One time, uh, the, uh, the polit I am, uh, of course, I am not a seasoned politician. I just from my professional then joined to politics and uh, the people uh, the, uh, give the confidence with me. And with that confidence of the people, I participate in the Indian politics and I participate at the national level. There are certain political parties who are biased. Uh, particularly uh, to be also. They thought that oh, he is a mere registrar of the university and how he comes uh, to the, the ministerial level. That is their assumption. But I would like to appeal to all the people of Manipur. At least the people of Manipur, particularly the youths and politicians, should have the guts of self-respect. If the people who are in the politics and who are in the age group, if they do not have the self-respect among ourselves, then that is not the symptom of civilization. They should remember that. If they want to uh, survive as a Manipuri or as a Maiti, there should be the self-respect. And of course, uh, see, if you see in most of the social media uh, uploaded uh, from my community. Uh, they are making mockeries to the leaders, to their elected peoples. And if they know the system of the Indian parliamentary system, when we will speak, how to speak, uh, many of the, the so-called economicians are also not known. So when they discuss in the local platform, they always criticize without knowing the system. And that, that is not, not. That's not correct. That, that is, is not, not wise. So when do you plan to rebuild your house? I, I don't have money. <laughs> I'm seeking <laughs> philanthropy <laughs> people <laughs> to help me. <laughs> and of course, uh, the burning of house. The house was also constructed during my service time with a loan from Baroda Bank and transferred to the State Bank. And so, uh, at the end of my service, I anyhow. Uh, the, uh, the repaid to that loan with interest. And that is purely my sweats earned money is building. And of course, building, I may uh, renovate it. Uh, the, the, if, uh, if my resource is developed. But my only worry and agony is that I have a collection of about 30, 40 years collection of records and documents. And I associated some of my relatives, who was the first Chief Minister of Manipur, my paternal uncle. Whenever he discussed with me, he also provided me many records, even the Darwa resolutions, all the administrative reports published during the British, and that were burned down. I do not know, uh, in a civilized world, 
a group of community, my own community, are targeting to burn the books and journals and record. And this is not the way, and this is not the character of a civilized community. Absolutely. So I appeal my younger generations, younger groups, at least if we want to show the community as one of the uh, civilized, and also having historical background, and also the place of the world famous Polo is there, and also the uh, one of the mega biodiversity of the area. So if we want to have and stand by our own food and participating with the empowerment of ourselves, book is compulsory, record is compulsory, journal is compulsory, reading is at most it should be done. But majority of the people are all uh, the easy going, uh, um, in a sense, they want to spend their life easily. I understand. So that's the mental agony that uh, uh, Rajkumar Ranjan Singh uh, went, uh, went through when his portion of his house was burned down. More than the portion of the house that was burned down, he is still distraught over the fact that very important books and archive materials were lost in the fire. But he did mention that there is a way forward as far as the Manipur crisis is concerned. There is a solution to the crisis. He's given a prescription for the solution and with a lot of hope in our mind. We thank Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh for his comments and uh, for spending time with us uh, answering a variety of questions right from Chandrayaan to uh, education uh, to the situation in Manipur and we really hope that uh, everything comes back to normal, peace prevails in Manipur. Thank you very much yeah, Professor Singh. Thank, uh, thank you very much for watching ANM News and we will definitely come back with more such interesting interviews in future. Keep watching ANM News. Namaskar. आरु खबरें अपडेट पे दे सब्सक्राइब करों आमदर YouTube चैनल टी और बेल आइकन ए क्लिक करों नोटिफिकेशंस पे दे